Hello, we're live. Oh, it's 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 crazy over here. I spilled my tea on the way back into the library, and so I have tea in the in the hallway that I have to clean up. I filled it a little too too high. That's okay. Okay. Uh, hello. How are we? Uh, uh, Nikki is here. Alex. Michelle. Hello, darlings. Oh, I am hoping to get some more words in. Um, I finally did get some words in uh, this morning's live stream. Um, I think it was 100... 155 words I got so far for the day. Um, I'd like to at least have a total of 1,500 for the day. Um, that would be ideal, but we'll see. Um, I've got my water. I've got my tea. I've got everything set up. I'll just have to go clean up some tea that I spilled in the uh, hallway during the first sprint, but we're here. Um, how has everyone been doing for the challenge? I am slightly behind. Um, I technically need a total of 977 words today to be on track, but I'd like to get more than that. Uh, um, but yeah, um, I don't really know what I was going to say. <laughs> um, oh, I have the forest room code scrolling at the bottom if you want to plant a tree with me. And as always, the Discord servers are linked down below where you can join us with other writing and nerdy talks and writing sprints, and it's a fun little cozy corner. So if you're not a part of it, go ahead and click the links down below. That's also where all of the Wordy Writer Challenge information will be, is in the Writers Unfiltered server. Um, and all of the links that I also have down below, you can find on the Discord as well. Um, but should we get started on our first sprint of the night and let people filter in? Did you just steal something from the garbage storm? Oh, I swear this dog. Ugh. <clears throat> storm likes to steal the garbage specifically kleenex it's disgusting ah uh, sure okay um let's see do we have people in the room we sure do why don't we go ahead and get this first sprint started and then we'll take a 10 minute break ish um afterwards. So I'm starting the tree. So there it goes. And we are now sprinting. I will see you guys back in 25 minutes. Happy sprinting.
Okay, and that was that sprint. How did we do? Uh, I put the 10 minute timer to uh, let us know when it's been 10 minutes. <laughs> Figure we can at least uh, start utilizing that a little bit. Um, I was able to get a vlog clip done. And then I was talking CRW stuff with Katrina. Um, so I didn't get any writing done. Um, but I am, I have everything set up now for it. So let me set up a new forest room code. Uh, let's do the ginkgo tree. And create room. Okay, that room code is 4XUNXYGSG. 4XUNXYGSG. Perfect. That is now scrolling at the bottom of the screen if you want to plant a tree with me. And uh, <clears throat> let me put that back up for right now. No, because it covers the time. Okay. And <clears throat> hello, everyone. Doing my best to wrap up the finishing scenes of my rough draft. How is everyone? Um, I am. I'm tired, <laughs> but I'm doing okay. <laughs> Um, what do you love or hate about dual protagonist novels? Um, I love that you get both sides of the story. I love them. <laughs> Hi. I love the campfire behind the timer. I'm so ready to write. Woo. Uh, this past sprint, I got caught up in fixing my printer. Ugh, those dang Ooh. printers. What? Are you growling at me? Are you going to come say hi? Are you going to come say hi? Oh, you are so hyper. You got a hyper puppy. Well, you're going to have to wait, baby. It's raining. She hates being wet. Yet yeah, you want... Yeah. All right, you're going to have to wait. I'm prepping artichokes that my husband was craving and brought home today. Ooh. Um, I've only had, like, artichokes in a spinach artichoke dip. <laughs> Learn to speak, Stephanie. Um, but I've heard such really great things about fried artichokes, I think, is what it's called. Um, and I really, really want to try them. Stormy, Stormy, you are being... Okay, she she pranced away. She definitely stole a Kleenex. Guarantee it. <laughs> I ate some homemade Chex Mix. Ooh, that sounds so good. I uh, last summer I printed out a recipe to make uh, homemade Chex Mix, but then I never made it. I got I ADHD man. <laughs> I use my Instant Pot and they turn out so good. Oh, I don't have an Instant Pot, but I, I need to try it. <clears throat> All righty. Um, I was starting to reread like the scene that I was working on earlier just to refresh my brain of where I like left off. And I think... I wrote in two different tenses for this scene, so I might have to do some editing for it. Because <laughs> I think I was... I usually write in the past tense, um, but for some reason I think parts of this scene I wrote in present tense, and I think I just need to uh, fix some wording. Um, does that happen to anybody else? I am constantly having this problem. 
I don't know why. Let's see. <clears throat> I also got bored earlier and decided to make a new layout for the stream yard. I totally forgot that you can even do layouts <laughs> until I saw Devin's earlier. And I'm like, oh, that's a really great idea. I don't know why I haven't made different layouts. <laughs> uh, um, what is everyone working on for the month? Are you working towards a writing goal or like a word goal or just like an over... Uh, or just like a general writing goal. Like my minimum goal is to write at least 20 scenes of the Kindle Vella project. But like my max goal is like hitting 30,000 words. So I have like a word count goal, but then I have like a more general obscure writing goal. <clears throat> Oh my goodness. <clears throat> Nikki is working on getting 10,000 words for the month. Nice. That seems pretty doable, right? Let's see. 10,000 divided by 30. That uh, is 333 slash 334 words a day. That's an awesome goal. I gave myself a doable goal of 15K words and my stretch goal of 30K. Nice. Yeah, I did 20 scenes instead of like a minimum word count goal just because... I would like to get like the first 20 episodes set up for the Kindle Vela project um, and get that going. Um, but I don't, I di wasn't sure how long each scene would be. So I didn't want to do like a minimum word count goal for that. But then um, I did like a, a max word count goal of 30. That's kind of why like my one is. Oh, just a little bit more obscure. <clears throat> oh, man. And what genre does everyone write? I know, Nikki, are you, you working on your contemporary romance, right? Michelle, what are you writing? And forgive me if I've already asked that. I feel like I have. Oh, man. <sighs> I don't know why I'm so tired. Mm -mm. Michelle, my current whip is contemporary romance with some slight paranormal aspects. Nice. So almost like a, uh, maybe like magical realism 
in a way. <clears throat> awesome. That was gonna like start the uh, next 25 minutes or not. Uh, I'll give everyone one more minute to um, join in on the tree if they wanna plant a tree. Um, and we'll start the next sprint real quick. <clears throat> um, I already got 1190 words so far for the month. Yes, you're so ahead of schedule, right? I think. Yeah, because it's day three. And if you, yeah, you're ahead of schedule. Awesome, Nikki. <clears throat> All right, we're going to go ahead and start this sprint. So I'm starting the tree. And we are starting the timer. I will see you guys back in 25 minutes. Happy sprinting.
And that was that sprint. How did we do? <clears throat> I got some words in. I'm trying to figure out last names for my main characters because <laughs> I don't have that. Let me set up a new... <clears throat> Uh, room for us. That is going to be 5282K K J S G. 5282K K J S G. Perfect. It is scrolling at the bottom of the screen if you want to plant a tree with me. We're going to go with the orange tree. And we will do the long break for this. Should probably change that. Uh -huh. Alrighty. And to the comments. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Um, there's a low-key haunting. It's important to the story, but not the main part of the story, which is why it's more contemporary romance. So it's contemporary romance just with elements of the supernatural. Hey, Kendra. Welcome. Coco made progress. I mostly just read the rest of this book I was reading. It's so good. It's part of a series called Chaos Walking. It made me cry. Oh, that's so cool. Hold on. I'm looking it up. Uh, uh, Chaos Walking. Yes, a series. Oh, by Patrick Ness. I've seen those around. Mm-mm. Nice. Uh, gosh, I already have a story I'm working on, but a new idea popped in. I'm tabling it for later. Make sure you at least write down what the idea was in like a little notebook so that you can come back to it and so that you don't, you know, lose it in the future <laughs> because I, that's, I've lost quite a few by not at least writing down the initial spark of the idea. It's really good. There's going to be a movie on it, too. Ooh. What genre is it? <clears throat> Dystopian young adult. Nice. I feel like that's a really popular genre for movies to get made. Or, I mean, well, The Hunger Games, but... No, and The Maze Runner. That, that one was turned into a movie, too. Uh, now it's time for writing. Um, I don't remember if we talked about it. What genre do you write, Kendra? Oh my goodness. Let's see. Why don't I find out how many words I wrote that sprint? I think I only wrote for about 10 to 15 minutes of that sprint. I had to go clean up the Kleenex that storm got and then I had to take her out. No, oh, not divided. Uh, 312 minus 155. I was able to get 157 words in. Not terrible, but I could do better. I did go back and reread and make sure that the tense was all the same. So I did do that. I didn't think I would like it as I mostly like fantasy, but I guess I do like stir, uh, dystopian stories like Divergent and Hunger Games, and I write YA fantasy. And Oh, Divergent also became a movie series. And I write YA fantasy and romance. Nice. <clears throat> I am current... My Kindle Vela project that I'm working on is currently a... New adult, maybe adult, um, fantasy romance or romanticy, whatever the correct term is nowadays. <clears throat> uh, 
progress is progress. I will take the extra 157 words. Uh-uh. Hopefully I'll get another 1,100 to 1,200 more tonight, but we'll see how the next couple of sprints go for me. Nice. I might try and work on my main story tonight, but I don't know. I have been ignoring it. <laughs> Sometimes you have to ignore certain stories. <clears throat> Sometimes some stories just need some simmering. I worked on character sheets. My artichokes are ready, so it's time to eat. Oh, yum. I'm jealous. <clears throat> I made um, Big Mac wraps for dinner, which is basically we took the leftover burgers that we grilled the other day and reheated them, put them in a wrap, and I made Big Mac sauce, like homemade Big Mac sauce, and put it in the wrap with lettuce and tomatoes and cheese. It's delicious, but I'm, like, still hungry. <laughs> the pirate story is going good, though. It's a fun write, and, oh, that sounds yummy. It was pretty good. I just wish it was a little bit more filling. <clears throat> and if the pirate story is what's calling to you, I say do it. Because, <laughs> I mean, that's, I've learned to embrace the chaos that comes with my brain. So, I'm totally on board with either switching projects or working on multiple projects. <clears throat> Do you all have any tips for writing a writing journal? Like, what kind of writing journal? Like, do you want to do, like, um, like writing prompts? Or do you want to do, like, something similar to, like, a morning pages where you just have, like, a stream of consciousness and you just write all the things that are in your head for a certain amount of minutes? <clears throat> what kind of journal are you wanting to do? Do you have any advice on struggling with grammar? I love writing, but that's the one thing that is really hard for me. And yes, sometimes you must write more than one. Um, struggling with grammar. I say while you're actually drafting, don't worry too much about the grammar or um, anything else. I say when you're done writing, put it through like... Um, Katrina and I, we both use Pro Writing Aid. It is a, um, it's technically, I think, like an AI-based tool, but it goes through your document and it goes through all of the grammar and it tells you what parts aren't making sense, what parts you might want to consider changing. It's like a pre-editing portion before it goes off to like an actual editor. Um, I use that a lot before I publish a new episode on Kindle Bella. So if you're struggling with that, I say run it through like pro writing aid. I think there's also Grammarly, um, but I haven't used Grammarly, so I don't know how that one is. Um, but yeah, there's, there's at least those two programs. There might be more out there too. Um, and then, yeah, sometimes you do need to write more than one story at the same time. I've got technically three going at the same time now. Um, I've got the Kindle Vela project. I've got my Project Amethyst, which is my um, other romanticy. And then I've got my um, contemporary romance. <clears throat> Do 
Lately, I've been painting my moods in one artwork uh, made you can write about one feeling in general. Yeah. Art is so cool. You're welcome. Grammarly sometimes doesn't work for me. I've never used Grammarly, so I I don't know. I have used Pro Writing Aid, and I do like Pro Writing Aid. And if you end up liking them, I do know that they have a big sale around Black Friday. I think they do like a 50% off type of sale. Um, so there's that to look forward to as well. I'm also an artist, so I love drawing my characters. Oh, I wish that I could draw my characters. Um, I used to draw and paint all the time. Um, in fact, in high school, I, I took like mostly art classes for my, what, like the, like the fun class that I get to, um, it does go right away. I don't like that it starts it right away. Is there a way to stop that? Oh, I can change this to 10 minutes, though. Maybe if I just take that portion off. We'll see. We'll see if that works. Um, <clears throat> anyways, a lot of my um, classes that I took were art classes, like all my extra classes that I could take. Um, and after high school, I didn't draw or paint very often. And I feel like I lost the skill. <laughs> Like, it's hard for me to even doodle nowadays. Um, I'm trying to get back into it, but it's really hard to get back into it when I'm bare, I'm such a perfectionist. And um, when it's not turning out the way I want it to, it just really irritates me. Um, but I do miss it. I love that, too. I I wish I could, like, and people in general were always difficult for me. I was more of, like, landscapes or, like, abstract. Um, portraits were never my strong suit from the beginning. <clears throat> so, I mean, I, I doubt I could do the character drawings. I might be able to get back into, like, painting landscapes. But I do remember loving having my art as a an outlet back in high school. I get that. I was like that for a bit, but then I just stopped caring and got messy with my art and it helped. <laughs> yeah, um, it's <laughs> it's turning off my brain um, and embracing the messiness is what is very difficult for me. And high school was also almost 20 years ago for me. <laughs> so um, it's a lot of years for me to, how was it already almost 20 years? It's been 16 years, I think, since I've been in high school. Holy shit. Uh -uh. Um, so that's a very long time for, like, no actual <laughs> artistic endeavors. <laughs> Should I write my ideas that I have for stories and write reviews on books that I've read, bullet journaling, slash outlining my books a bit, too? <clears throat> um, well, I feel like... Those are like separate ideas. So I have a reading journal um, that I have completely separate from everything. And that's where I put like all my thoughts of my books, like what I've read that year, um, any kind of like reading challenges I've, I was a part of, um, that kind of stuff. 
um, for ideas that you have for stories, I have this notebook that is dedicated, well, it was dedicated to um, the random uh, shiny new ideas that come into my brain, and this would just, like, be carried with me at all times. So I've got one, two, three, four different shiny ideas in here, and it kind of just morphed into becoming my Kindle Vela project notebook because I've already got, like, ten pages of brainstorming stuff for the Kindle Vela project. Um, but there's that. And then this is where my, <laughs> this is where my perfectionistic qualities come in. I have separate notebooks for each project. Um, and then I am also going to be starting a writing prompt notebook. Um, where every day I'm going to pick out a writing prompt and I'm just going to write that prompt and then do a different prompt the next day. And then I also have my morning pages, which is acts more as like a diary of my life. It's just for me to get all of my thoughts out about life in general. <clears throat> so that's what I personally do. Um, but if it makes more sense for you to have everything in one, then who am I to stop you? <laughs> and no worries. I loved art class in high school. Only class I cared about. Um, yeah, uh, almost the same. Um, I really cared about my English classes as well. I have been a word nerd my entire life. <laughs> so I was big into English classes and literature classes when I was in school. Um, it's why I also went for the Eng English literature degree. Gotta go let puppy out. Uh, writing prompts are always fun, especially when you get something you would never really think about writing about. Like once I got a clown prompt, oh my gosh, I would totally not write that prompt. I hate clowns. <laughs> oh my goodness. I would have definitely skipped that one and written a different prompt. <laughs> Props to you. The <laughs> same, but I didn't like the students there. That's understandable. <clears throat> um, let's see. Last call for joining the forest room to plant a tree with me because we're going to get this next sprint started in just a minute or two. <clears throat> but yeah, I have journals up the wazoo. It's kind of ridiculous, but... I mean, it is what it is. I also have my HB90 notebook. Here is the brainstorming um, experiment book notebook. So this is for the choose your own adventure No. Yeah, choose your own adventure brainstorming experiment that we've been doing. All of my notes for that are in there. The shiny new idea notebook that turned into the Kindle Vela project notebook. I've got my uh, writing bullet journal where I keep all of my stats on uh, the words that I write every month. And uh, this is also where I do the spreads for the all day writing days that we do on uh streaming or uh, on live streams um here's my project amethyst notebook which has all of my brain dumping and brainstorming and scene ideas of my project amethyst as well as my 
map and other inspirations for that. I've got my tell you I am drowning in notebooks and journals. I've got my morning pages, which is like my diary, basically. I've got this brand new one that I haven't started yet, but I think I'm going to start like an actual bullet journal so that I can track certain things of my um, health basically, just because I've been dealing with a lot of, like, the sinus stuff, and I just want to, like, track that, plus I want to track, like, my mood and my anxiety and all of that stuff. Here is my 2024 reading journal. Here is my decades reading journal, where I have, like, everything that... It's hard to explain this one. But I don't have it, like, fully done yet. But, like, I have, like, my years in review. So, like, <clears throat> how many books I read that year, how many pages I read. And then I've got um, like the Reese's, uh, Reese's Book Club, Reese Witherspoon. Um, I have her books written down because I, I would like to read some of those and then I'll just like highlight it and give it like a rating and when I read it and then I have the same thing with seasonally booked up which is one of my best friend Dana um her book club that started up in 2020 I have all of the seasons they do for a year all of those and then all of my book of the month books that I have that I would like to read as you can see I have slacked so much in reading book of the month books and then I have like my backlist um, lists so, like, I would like to read all of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books, all of Emily Henry books, Elizabeth Hoyt, Colleen Hoover, which that's, I got to cross that off. I don't think I want to go through her entire backlist anymore. Um, Daphne Perry slash Willa Smith or Willa Nash there. That's her pen name. Um, R.S. Gray, Catherine Cowles. So that's what this reading journal is about. It's more of like the long term rather than what I want to get done in like one year. And those are just the journals that I have around because those are like my like main notebooks that I work on all the time. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> but yeah. So I'm probably not the best person to ask when it comes to what you should do with your writing journal. <laughs> because I am chaotic and I have so many different journals for so many different things. Plus, I have so many of these Archer and Olive notebooks because I went through a phase of buying so many Archer and Olive notebooks, and I had to stop because I needed to start using them, and so I haven't purchased a new notebook, like a new Archer and Olive notebook, in literal years um, because I need to use up the ones that I have. I literally have like probably 15 to 20 blank ones that still need to be used. And this is just my way of being able to like, I buy them, so I have to use them, right? I, I used to just collect pretty notebooks and be too afraid to write in them because then I wasn't making them pretty anymore. <laughs> So 
same so many journals for so many things. I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> I made it a TikTok clown prompt instead. Less scary. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> Ooh, I need to journal more. I love journaling. Journaling is one of the things that makes me, it helps with my anxiety a lot. So I've noticed that if I don't keep up with the journaling, my anxiety kind of creeps in a little bit more. Um, plus it's just, I think journaling is just fun. But we are going to go ahead and start this next sprint. I kind of got on to a journaling tangent. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and start the tree. And we are going to start the timer. And I will see you guys back in 25 minutes. Happy sprinting!
Okay, and that was that sprint. How did we do? Um, I was able to figure out all of my characters' last names, which took a while. And I did finish the last sprint, or the, la the first scene, which is what I was working on last sprint. So I was able to finish one scene so far for the month. So only 19 more to go <clears throat> to meet my minimum goal. And <clears throat> um, 481 minus minus. I was able to punch in 169 more words. Um, but I just started the next scene and I'm feeling. I'm feeling good about it. So let me set up a new room. Let's see. We'll do the we'll do the tulips. The new forest code is five G B. 935 XSG 5GB935 XSG. Perfect. That is now scrolling at the bottom of the screen if you want to plant a tree with me. And Kendra, I think I did pretty good. I did 214 words. That's so good. Coco, 366 words, but I'm falling asleep, so I'm going to hop off for tonight. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining us, Coco. Good job on all the words. <clears throat> I am at a total of 481 words for the day. Only a thousand more to meet my daily goal that I want. <laughs> Thinking of rewriting my main story. Help. <laughs> um, I don't know if I can help you on this one because I have rewritten Project Amethyst so many times. Um, I've been working on Project Amethyst since like 20. 2016. It has gone through so many versions. Like it started off as a YA fantasy. And then when I stopped reading YA and ventured into adult, it turned into an adult fantasy romance. And um, that's what it currently is now. And it was originally Project Violet because there was a different magic system and now I have a magic system that's rooted in crystals and so it, it's changed dramatically. So if you feel like it needs a rewrite, I say do it, but also like I don't know if I'm the best person to uh, say that because I have been working on this since 2016. I ate my artichoke and now I'm full. It was delicious. It sounds so good. I'm going to have to try making these. <clears throat> Can I make them another way other than in the instant pot or is the instant pot like the easiest way of doing it? Yeah, but that's like all day today. Um, it's been it's been a slow writing day today for me uh like I love my story but I feel like it needs something different and in my main the characters are doing whatever <laughs> I need them to do something then I say I say do some brainstorming on it and see what you think needs to change and that's what the pain <laughs> My main I have been working on since 2020. So you feel my pain. <laughs> you got this. Thank you. 
You can steam them in a pot. It takes like 30 to 40 minutes. All right, I'm going to have to try these. If you have a good recipe, put it in the foodies section of our Discord because I really want to try them. <laughs> mm -mm. It would be my sixth draft. Have you completed a draft for it? My problem is I haven't completed a full draft of Project Amethyst. I have written like 20 to 30,000 words of multiple first drafts of Project Amethyst and then things change and I go back and I start rewriting. So I haven't like gotten all the way to the end for Project Amethyst and I think that's my biggest problem. Um, I need to just get to the end. <laughs> I like using the pressure cooker because it takes half the time. Yeah, I really need to look into a pressure cooker. Not yet. It's hard for me to complete a full. Maybe that's why I'm thinking to rewrite since I'm at chapter 16. So you're like in the murky middle. You sound like me so much. I hate the murky middle. I hate writing the middle. I don't know if it's just because I know what's happening at the beginning and I know what's happening at the end of the story, but it's getting to the end. So that murky middle is so difficult for me because I feel like if I don't have a clear idea of where the middle is going, I just kind of lose it and then I lose steam and then I'm just like, ah, Yes, the murky middle. <laughs> Same. It's like the characters aren't doing anything. Yeah, I totally get this. You sound like me. We have the same problem. I think we just have to get over that hump of the middle. But if you feel like there's something that you need to change in it, I say do it. Because I did just recently do a big brainstorming session of Project Amethyst. I think it was in January or early February, um, I did a huge brainstorming session because there was just something about the previous versions that weren't working and it had to do with the magic system. So I had to figure out what the, what was going on with the magic system. And I ended up taking out the elemental magic, which is what was the the elemental magic was like the very first initial spark of the idea for this back in 2016. And I ended up cutting it and taking it out. And I came up with an entirely new magic system. So I'm really excited for where it's going now. But I did have to like kill my darlings essentially because I was holding on to that elemental magic portion of the story. And it just wasn't working. So I ended up taking that out. So if you feel like there's something that's just not working, do a brainstorming session and try and figure out what you think it's missing. I feel your pain. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I might try that tonight. Uh, Michelle, try writing it backwards. If you know how it ends, write the end and go backwards from there. Interesting. I will have to try this. I'm not one to where I have to write linearly. Like if a scene comes up, comes into my head for that story, I go ahead and start writing that scene and then I'll just, you know, move it wherever I need to move it. So maybe I will try that. Yeah. Katrina, however, needs to write linearly. She cannot write other than in order. <laughs> I love the idea, but I'd never be able to do it. <laughs> that and you don't like jumping around in drafts. You really don't. Thanks for the advice. You're welcome. 
And yeah, it is a smart idea. I'm going to have to try that too. Now for this Kindle Vela project, I have no idea how it's ending. This one I'm kind of writing on the seat of my pants, by the seat of my pants, whatever the terminology is for that. I am pantsing this one almost, yeah, almost all the way pantsing it. Like I've got, I, I think I'm doing a Katrina thing with this project. Like, I've got some brainstorming stuff, and I, like, have some, some scene ideas, but I am, like, pantsing this from, I'm scared, but this is also just for, like, fun, <laughs> but I am terrified. I am not, I am not one to pants. <laughs> Yeah, I can't jump around. I have to go in order. Yeah, I know that about you. <laughs> I understand that. I am also a pantser, but maybe I need to plot more. I am more of a planter. I don't necessarily go super heavy into plotting. Katrina might say otherwise. Um, there are times where I do plot a lot, but I wouldn't consider myself a full-on plotter. Like, I don't have, you know who I would consider a full-on plotter is, like, Abby Emmons. I feel like she has, like, 20 to 30,000 word outlines, and I don't, I don't go that drastic. I might have, like, an outline of, like, a beginning, middle, and end type of thing, but I, I would say my outlines are no longer than 5,000 words. And it's not usually a full outline either. It's just, okay, this needs to happen at some point. This needs to happen at some point. Put it together. Um, so I pants it in a way of like, I have a, I have a roadmap and there's several routes that I can take. And then obviously when I'm on these routes, I can get diverted depending on what's happening in that scene. That's kind of like how I write um, for the most part. I don't like pantsing from the very beginning. Um, so this is new for me. Uh, it's terrifying. But it's also why I want to get like the first 20 scenes done during this month. That way I can have some, um, some stuff to schedule and I'll be like, uh, uh, it's... Uh. <laughs> It's step into my world. Yeah, I'm terrified. <laughs> I am terrified of, of your way of writing. I'm terrified. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Yeah, to me, you are a full-on plotter, but that's coming from me. Yeah, I, I wouldn't consider myself a full-on plotter because I don't know everything that's happening. I know parts of what is happening and I know that I want to get to a certain point, but what happens along the way is a mystery. So that's why I don't consider myself a full on plotter. I don't like outlining, but I like brainstorming and getting to know my characters. I, I love brainstorming. Brainstorming is one of my favorite portions. I cannot do that. Scenes come to me out of order all the time. So plotting it first would not work for me. There you go. I love how different all of us are when it comes to writing. There is not one way to write a book. And I love that. And just because you write a book one way doesn't mean that's the way you're going to write another book. It's fascinating to me. It is so fascinating to me. <clears throat> um <laughs> it's all a mystery to me lol i plot the chapter i'm about to work on sometimes <laughs> that's how i feel like i'm doing with the kindle vela project i have no idea what's gonna actually happen i have an idea like a a, a small a small inkling in the sense of, let's see, 
in the sense of I I have outlined or marked down which face suitor has relations which with which um human participant um so there's like potential like you know triangles happening at times but it's a reality love competition type of thing so they'll be like going on dates with each with other with everyone basically um i think like you know love is blind meets Uh, love island maybe <laughs> um and like i know what the characters names are and i know what the fairy courts are um and i know what the world is called but what's actually happening i couldn't tell you could not tell you no idea. None whatsoever. And that's what's terrifying to me. Uh, we all have different brains and different modes of creating. And I love that. It's also why I love watching um, other author tubers and like their way of writing because sometimes I feel like what has worked for me in the past won't necessarily work for me all the time or maybe it's not working for me at the current time and so I love watching everyone's different creative processes processes whatever that word is um but yeah I love it exactly I always write two beats whether I realize it or not, I just have to figure out which structure it is while I'm writing to make sure I'm hitting the right ones. Yeah. The one you're currently working on is fitting more towards Save the Cat, right? Not Romancing the Beat. Um, I'm not even taking any kind of story structure into the Kindle Bella because it's not like like, I might take it and put it in a novel format afterwards, but I'm not writing it as a novel right now. Um, it's, <laughs> it because since it's the episodic fiction, it's the serialized fiction. Um, but yeah. Thanks, Kendra, for joining us. Have a good night. Yeah, it's more along the Save the Cat Beach structure. I'm working on the fun and games part right now. The fun and games part is always where I get stuck because I never know what I should do in that portion. And it's such a big beat, like such a big beat. I think it takes, it's what, like 30% of the novel is the fun and games beat. Where did I have that written down? Um, let's see. Uh, Patreon. Um, yeah, the fun and games portion of the novel is about 30% of the novel, and that's right around the time where I start to go like that. So <laughs> I hate the fun and games part because I have never been able to get past the fun and games part. <laughs> yeah, right now it's them getting to know each other. Uh, yeah, I just... Uh. One of these days, I will finish an actual manuscript. Hopefully, it'll be sometime in quarter two of 2024, but we shall see. <laughs> um, we're going to go ahead and get this sprint started, though, because I got to go get Storm from outside. She's probably going to be soaking wet because it's sort of misting out there. 
Um, I do too. Usually once I get past the midpoint, I'm golden. I love writing the last third of the book. Getting started is always hard for me. I like the beginning. I've never been able to write an ending because I've never gotten to the ending. Like I will write some scenes that are in the third act, but only if they come to me at the time. Um, but I've never gotten to an actual ending because I've never gotten past act two. I hate act two. I hate it. It is what it is. All right. I am starting the tree now. And changing this to now sprinting and starting the timer. I will see you guys back in 25 minutes and happy sprinting.
Okay, and that was that sprint. How did we do? <clears throat> I was able to write... Two hundred and twenty-five words, but I had to look up hair colors and dress colors and whatnot. So I got distracted on Pinterest a little bit. Two two five. I am at a total of seven hundred and six words for the day, though, so that's good. I'm gonna do one more sprint just because I'm really in the zone for this um, scene, but I'm going to do one more sprint so I can finish up this scene and we're going to end it with a Hakaranda tree. So let me create the room for this. New room code is 57W4PEM. S G five seven W four P E M S G perfect. That is now scrolling at the bottom of the screen. And I know <laughs> that Act Two is the biggest part of the book, um, which is why I feel like my full draft would end up being a bigger draft than what I expect because I feel like my first act is usually like 25 to 30,000 words at least with the fantasy um with my contemporary romance that I got I think 33,000 words I think I was like a couple scenes into the fun and games part. Um, so like that might be act two might have, or act one might have been like closer to the 25,000 word mark for that one. But like, yeah, but it's always when I get to the fun and games part, it's like, I don't know what else to put in the fun and games part. It's supposed to be fun, right? <laughs> The fun and games part is not fun for me. <laughs> Katrina got 386 words. Yes. It's not hard to get sucked into the rabbit hole that is Pinterest. Yes. Yes, I know. Uh, I know. <laughs> I'm doing my night stuff and playing on Nintendo Switch. Ooh, what are you playing? I have to uh, catch up on some Disney Dream Light Valley stuff. Um, if I, if I can get my words done tomorrow, I might dedicate the rest of the day to Nintendo Switch. <laughs> the Witcher 3. Nice. Oh. Um... Yeah, I just, I really need a manuscript finished. I need to get a first draft of something done. That is the goal this year. Oh, oh man. Also, now that I know that I can change the timer on these, we can we can totally do shorter or longer sprints. That's exciting. I love when I figure things out. Brrr. 
I'm also loving the fact that I figured out how to change layouts on here. Or like how to like add my own type of layout in a way. <sighs> oh man. Oh. Katrina, does that mean you're at like um a thousand words for the day so far? Or no, probably eleven hundred. Yeah, I'm totally not hitting 2,500. You can hit 1,500, though. If I can get 800 words in this uh, next sprint, I'll hit my 1,500 word count goal. <laughs> I don't think that's happening, though. <laughs> my son keeps telling me to put steam on my laptop. I'm reluctant because I know once I... I do. It will suck all my time away from me. <laughs> what games do you play on Steam? My husband, I, I don't know what my husband plays, but he plays a couple games on Steam. I have a Steam account, but I just have Disney Dreamlight Valley on it. Um, I also have The Sims, but they're not on Steam. They're on Origin, I think. Yeah, I don't know if I can hit 500 in the next sprint, but I can try. <laughs> you might be able to. Stranger things have happened. He wants to teach me his fave games like Gmod and TF2. Nice. My daughter really wants me to play Minecraft with her, but uh, not. Yeah, Minecraft. Yeah. Um, but Minecraft is very stressful for me. <laughs> like I can watch them play it. Um, but when I've tried playing it, um, it was so stressful. I handed the remote or the controller back to my brother. Um, my brother actually came over on Saturday to help my daughter play Minecraft because she recently got it on her switch and she kept asking me questions. I'm like, girl, I don't know what to do with it. Like, Uncle Maddie tried teaching me and it was so stressful. So she's like, well, you need to text him and tell him that he needs to come over and teach me. So he came over and they were playing for like two hours, maybe three hours. And it was so much fun to watch them. But Minecraft is so stressful for me if I play it I have to play it on the like peaceful setting <laughs> I'm more like Minecraft Roblox and the Call of Duty I love Minecraft but I scream when I'm attacked by monsters um so was Amelia and my brother <laughs> my brother more so for like the theatrical um tendencies to like make other people laugh um my daughter just because she thinks it's funny <laughs> um me I'm a cozy gamer I like the cozy games so I like Disney Dreamlight Valley I like Animal Crossing um I recently downloaded Palea um I want to try Fay Farm um there's also the Paleo Pines, which looks like Animal Crossings, but with dinosaurs. Um, that one looks really, really cute. I've got a whole bunch on my wish list, but um, if I'm not playing cozy games, I'm also playing like Super Mario Brothers um, and Mario Kart. Like, th that's my vibe. <laughs> I've never played Minecraft. I don't really game. Minecraft, it, if you don't have it on the peaceful setting, it is 
so stressful. So stressful. The only things I play are the ones from when I was a teen. Crash Bandicoot, Mario Brothers, and Mario Kart. I love Mario Brothers and Mario Kart. Um, we have to get two more controllers so that all four of us can play at the same time for Mario Kart. But Paul actually just bought um, Mario Brothers Wonder, which is like a new and improved version of Super Mario Brothers. Um, he used some of his birthday money to get it. And um, so I'm going to try that one out. But yeah, you can't go wrong with the Mario games. My son would be like, stop screaming, and he'd laugh at me. <laughs> well, okay, so then there was, I forget what it's called, but there was the one guy um, on Minecraft, and my brother, I, I forget the name of it, but he was like, I, I asked what it was, and he's like, oh, he looks like Slenderman. I'm like, what? Like, I, I no. <laughs> like, that's terrifying. <laughs> Sometimes Donkey Kong, but that game always made me mad. I don't know if I ever played Donkey Kong, to be perfectly honest. Like, maybe back when I was, like, nine, nine or ten, when we had an N64. I know we had the game Donkey Kong, but I don't know if I ever played it. I know my brother did. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yes, that was the name, Enderman. Oh, yeah, no, that was terrifying. You can't look them in the eye or they'll attack. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That was terrifying. I think um, I think he came around like two or three times when him and my daughter were playing. I'm just like, that's terrifying. I don't want Slenderman getting me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, last call for planting a tree with me. Because um, we're going to start this last sprint in the next minute. But, yeah. I'm definitely more of, like, the cozy gamer. If I'm on my... Com if I'm playing a game on my computer, it's probably The Sims. But it's been such a long time since I've played The Sims. I do have them on actually this laptop right here. Um, but yeah. Oh, and you know what games I do actually want to get back into? I think I would probably have to look on Steam. Um, is the Nancy Drew Mysteries. I used to play those all the time when I was in middle school and high school. And I totally, I want those back. I want, I want to play them. Actually, I'm going to see if they're on. Do I have Steam on this one? Yes, there you are. Uh, Nancy Drew. Oh my God. Oh my god, there's so many. There's like even some newer ones like from like 2017 and 2019. Oh my goodness. Oh, I remember The Curse of Blackmore Manor was one of the ones I had. So like 2009 is when I was like playing these. I totally want to get some and play this again. Oh, and some of them are pretty cheap. I didn't realize that there were so many. Okay. Rocket League is pretty fun. Is that the um is that the game where it's kind of like you're in a car but you're also like playing soccer? Is that the one I'm think thinking of? If so, my brother plays that on Xbox all the time. Which I also, yeah, soccer, but with cars. Okay, so I was thinking of the right thing. 
yeah, he plays that on um, his Xbox all the time. He actually gave us his old Xbox when he got an, uh, an Xbox XS. Um, so I have his old Xbox One, and I play Disney Dreamlight Valley on that because it's cross-platform. And I also play the Hogwarts Legacy. Um, but I have quite a few games on my, like, wish list for that as well. Yep. <laughs> Alrighty, I am closing out of Steam before I get distracted. Bringing Scrivener back up. And we're going to go ahead and get this last sprint started. I am starting the tree right now. And final sprint of the stream. Starting the timer. I will see you guys back in 25 minutes. Happy sprinting.
Okay. <clears throat> and that was that sprint. How did we do? I almost came to 1,500 words for the day. Almost. I'm at 1,212 words for the day. I am totally okay with that. Um, it's more than what I needed to get. So I'm happy. Uh, let's see how many words I wrote that sprint. Let's see. I was at 706. So 12, 12 minus 706. Oh, come on. I wrote 506 words that sprint. That was a really, really good sprint for me. 506. Perfect. I didn't finish the second scene, but I'm getting close to it. Um, but I'm leaving it to where I feel comfortable for tomorrow. That is getting close. <laughs> Let's see. To the comments. 1,666 words for the day. See, I told you you could hit the 1,500 for the day. Yay, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, not as much as I needed, but I got 583. That sprint. Yes. Woohoo. I continued working on my character sheets. Yay. Love that. I should probably do some character sheets for these characters, actually. That might not be a bad idea to do tomorrow. Let me write that down. Uh oh. I feel a sneeze coming down. Work on character sheets. Do you do like a specific um character sheet? Like, or did you make your your own? <sighs> I'm hoping I can get some decent word counts in this weekend. Same, girl. Same. But until then, I'll write at lunch and night for as long as I can. Not tonight, though. This lady is tired. Totally get it. I'm ready to go read. <laughs> um, I am going to put in my word count for in my spreadsheet. So I got 12-12 today. Which... means <laughs> which means I need 969 words tomorrow to stay on track which is only one more word than what you would need every day for 30 days to hit 30,000 words that makes no sense Shouldn't it be a thousand words? Did I do that wrong? Oh, yep. I did do that wrong. There we go. That's fixed. I was going to say, that's wrong. Okay. I still need to hit 969 words tomorrow to stay on track, which is less than what I would need if I... I was only getting a thousand. Never mind. I, I don't know what I'm talking about right now. Um, I'm going to have to fix that calculation on the actual spreadsheet. Shoot. To fix it for November. Yep. All right, so those of you who have the Wordy Writer spreadsheet, there's a couple formulas that need to be fixed. Honestly, it's just April and November's. Yeah, 
it's just April and November's that need to be fixed. So I'll fix that. Um, that's what happens when I rush. Okay. Well, anyways. Also, why isn't this working? Okay. Th this... Hmm. Um... That's why. Okay, C37 is what this needs to be. Okay, there we go. Oh my goodness. Okay, that means November's needs to be fixed. There we go. Okay. I am 6.32% of the way complete for my max writing goal. And I've written 1,895 words for the month. Okay. I use Sarah Cannon's template. Oh, okay. I have those. <clears throat> and I'm using Dabble Writer's character template for more detailed character info. I don't know what that one looks like because I don't have Dabble anymore. Um, I think their prices are ridiculous. <laughs> um, and they don't have a free version. I didn't actually know that they had character templates. That's how long it's been since I've done Dabble Writer. I fixed the one in April. Okay. Um, you'll also have to fix November then. I'll fix the, um, I should do that right now. Um, my drive, Wordy Writer Challenge, Wordy Writer Challenge Spreadsheet. Let me fix this. Um, in the words written portion, you also have to, for April, you have to change it from uh, C38 to C37. And same thing for the November one. So the November, the words per day to go to meet, you just have to change it from 31 days to 30. And then in the words written, it has to be C37. All right. I just fixed it on the master spreadsheet if you want to re-download, but it's fixed there. Okay. Uh, you can Google it and the sheet comes up. I copy pasted from the blog post. Oh, okay. Awesome. I'll take a look at it then. Um, dabble writer character template. Just Googled it. There we go. And I'll take a look at it tomorrow because I'm not going to close out this tab. <laughs> I got caught up in my game. Yay! That's awesome. Um, I'm going to have to do a quick um, vlog update. And I'm going to do um, some updates for the... Instagram stories on how I did today and whatnot. Um, and then I'm going to lay down and read. That is what's on the agenda for the rest of the night for me. Um, the next time I am streaming is on Sunday. However, there's going to be a caveat. Um, in, it's not going to be an all-day writing day anymore. I'm going to have a morning stream and I'm going to have an evening stream. The afternoon stream is hit or miss because I will be at my stepdad's mother's wake all day. Well, not all day, but it's from two to six. So I'm going to be there for like the majority of the time to support my stepdad. Um, so 
I don't know exactly how long the morning stream will be, and I don't know exactly how long we're going to be gone for the day on Sunday. Um, I think it just depends on how long my kids can last at the wake. Um, so there might be three streams, but there will for sure be two streams. So for sure count on the, the morning and for sure count on the evening. The afternoon is probably completely cut out. Um, so I will make a note of that in the Discord and I'll get those live streams set up tomorrow so that there's at least links and you guys can hit the notification button if you want. Um, but I did want to like mention that right now before I forgot. And Nikki, oh my God, Stephanie, I forgot to ask you how you're feeling. I'm feeling a lot better than yesterday, but I'm more congested, which is driving me bonkers. Um, I should probably get like a nasal rinse tomorrow and I'm not looking forward to it. I've never done one, but my ENT suggested that I would probably benefit from that. And with my, my sinuses being so bad right now because of whatever cold I've got, I should probably do a nasal rinse and I'm not looking forward to it. Um, it doesn't sound appealing to me in the least. No. <laughs> I say sheet, but it's a blog post on their site. The best character template ever, 100 plus. Okay. Um, that's the very first one that pops up. I just clicked on it and I will look at that tomorrow. It's more like a questionnaire type of thing. Yeah. No, it's not the plague. It's just a cold. Just a cold, a random cold that I caught. Um, my kids are, they bring home all the germs from school. So uh, it's real fun, real fun. But no, it's definitely not the plague. Um, when I have, when I have COVID, it. I definitely know when I have it. Um, it's for some reason, um, every single time I've had COVID, which has been two to three times, I've felt the same. Um, and this is definitely not it. This is just sinus related issues. Um, and every single time I have had COVID, I've had a fever. I haven't had a fever with this one. This one is just ugh, sinus -y stuff. <clears throat> Super exciting though, right? Um, but yeah. So, um, you know what? Let me put that in the Discord right now before I forget. Um, we'll put it in the, put it in the announcements. Okay, everyone wanted to do a quick announcement that this Sunday, April 7th, Learn how to type, Stephanie. I'll set up those live streams tomorrow. 
I wanted to let y'all know what's happening. All right. It is in the announcements on my Discord that this Sunday will not be an all-day live stream. Um, I've only had COVID once, and that was back in 2022. Yeah, the first time we had it was in June of 2021. And that was actually, like, the worst time we had it. And I say uh, we've had it two to three times because when we got it in June of 2021, it felt very reminiscent of when we were sick in December of 2019, which was before um, the pandemic technically, you know, shut us all down and everything. But it was fully in the States before they shut down in, what was it, March? Yeah, March of 2020. Um, and it felt very reminiscent of when we were sick for like one to two weeks with a terrible, terrible um, cough and chills, fever. It, it felt the same as when we were sick in June of 2021. Uh, June of 2021, I lost my sense of smell. My taste was fine. Um, and it, it was just like, it was like a week and a half of just like sleeping for 18 hours and whatnot and just being very bleh. And then we got it again literally one year later in June of 2022. Um, and that was only for a couple of days and it was not as severe. Um, and then 2023, nothing. Um, we tested quite a few times cause we did have a cold. Um, and we just wanted to rule it out. Like maybe, you know, it was COVID, but like, since we already had, um, like we had the, um, oh my God, what is it called? The, uh, oh my God, I'm losing my words. But anyways, um, each time that we had it, it like kept getting less and less drastic. So like we tested probably five or six times last year, whenever we would get a random cold and it always came out, nothing negative. Um, and then now we're in 2024 and I know this is just a cold, but yeah. But my son brings home colds from school, and that's always fun. Yeah, I mean, when you have little kids, they are covered in germs. I get it. Mine are five and seven. Well, almost seven. And kids are disgusting. <laughs> I love it. I love them, but they are disgusting. <laughs> I had it three times. The first time in 2021 after a concert, another time in 2022, and again in 2023. Yeah. No, I don't have the vaccine. I didn't want to get the vaccine until I saw more trials of it. Like, I, I didn't want to put something in my body that I, no. So, I did not get it. I just have the, um, uh, there's a specific word for like, when you get the vaccine, it gives you the immunity. Not immunity, because you can still get it. Just there's a, It starts with an A. It's on the tip of my, tip of my tongue. Oh, but anyways, um... Antibodies. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, I just have the antibodies from when I had COVID previously. So my body knows how to fight it off and everything. My COVID symptoms only lasted a week and it wasn't terrible, but I also had strep throat on top of that and it sucked. Yeah, I've actually never had strep throat. I did get tested for strep throat uh, in December, December or January, um, and I really thought it was going to be strep throat because my throat was killing me and they told me it was just postnasal because all my tests came back negative. <laughs> I still don't have my taste and smell back to where it was. It's annoying. See, I my smell is back to normal, if not even better. Yeah, the, R the RNA vaccines just kind of scare me a little bit, and I feel like it. they haven't been tested enough for me to feel comfortable putting it in my body. So... I, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't get it right now. <laughs> yes, Katrina got the, the word for me. <laughs> Strep throat was worse than COVID. COVID for me was just very, I felt very lethargic and like the nausea, I, I would get nauseous when I had COVID and it would like come in waves. And I literally slept for like 18 out of the 24 hours of the day. Like our kids were pretty much fending for themselves because Joe and I had it at the same time. And they were, both of them were fine. I, my kid, my kids either have a, an immunity to, to it, or they just had like a very, very, very mild case of it. Um, cause they were completely fine the entire time on both occasions that we had it. And, um, it was, it was just more of like being super, super tired and random chills with a fever for like the first couple of days. And, um, then just like a really bad cold. And then the first time I lost my sense of smell, the second time I didn't lose anything. And the second time I wasn't as nauseous but I was just as tired. It was more of like a lethargic type of feeling. Yep, I totally get it. At my son's last doctor appointment, I let him choose what vaccines he wanted out of the three they offered. I had massive headaches and slept a lot. I was down for a week the first time and then a few days the other two times. Yeah, the very, the very first one that was officially um, a COVID one, because I can't prove if our December 2019 was a COVID. It just felt like it was. Um, I The very first one was heavy sleeping, heavy sleeping. And then the second time we had it, um, Joe's only lasted like 12 hours. Mine was like three days of me being tired and one day, like 12 hours of like a fever. And then I was completely fine after like the third day of getting all my sleep. <laughs> I didn't want to force anything on him since it's his body and he's a teen now. Yeah. Um, I feel bad because my son is five and he actually just had to get his um, shots for entering kindergarten and he hated them. But um, those ones, I, I, they've been around since forever now. Um, so those ones I feel comfortable give, letting him get, especially since all the ones prior to it, he hasn't had any side effects for him. So I'm totally fine with those. When it gets to him, him and my daughter being a teen and it's ones that aren't, that haven't been around for a while, I'll definitely let them, uh, make their own decision. Um, like when I was a teenager, I think, I think like age 17 or something, the HPV shot was just being introduced or something like that. And my doctor asked if I wanted to get it. 
Um, I was like, well, do you recommend it? And he's like, well, it hasn't really been around for a whole lot. So it's just, it's really up to you. And I'm like, okay, well, I think I'm good. And so I didn't get that one. And now I feel like the HPV shot is almost mandatory. I'm not sure if it is now. Um, but it was like just coming out. So I didn't have that one either. But like anything like that, I'll definitely let my kids make their decisions when they're teens because it's their body. Um, yeah, it is recommended now. When when I was a teen, it wasn't like a recommendation type of thing. It was like just coming out. And I didn't feel comfortable putting it in my body yet. And now I think I'm just too old to even get the HPV shot. Isn't there like a time frame on it? That's the one he chose to get. Yeah. It's not, but highly recommended. Both my kids got it. But other than the required ones, I let them choose. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I'll be. <clears throat> the ones that they have to get right now is because they're all the required ones. I wish it was an option when I was a teen. If I, it was, I don't remember. It probably wasn't because you're a little bit older than me. And I remember when I was like 17 or 18, it was like just coming out. Like that shot was just coming out. Um, I'm almost positive. In 2006, it was first, HPV vaccination was first recommended in 2006. So I was 16, but I didn't, it was, I think I was 17 when I saw my gynecologist and she had asked and I was like, I'm not, I'm okay right now. Yeah, I know that wasn't around when I was a teen. Yeah, it had literally just came out when I was a teen. Yeah. And isn't there like a time frame of when you can get the HPV shot or am I thinking of something else? For most persons who CDC says you can get it up till 45. Why does that not sound correct? Interesting. They're giving that as young as nine. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, so what do I know? But wow. No, I was 21. <laughs> Forgot a year. <laughs> um, yeah. Alrighty. <laughs> It does seem way too young, but I thought it was like, like high school years. And I thought there was like a cutoff. As sad as what is being 21 in 2006, that's not sad. You're only five years older than me. That's, that's nothing. That is nothing. Alrighty, my loves. I am going to call it because I am going to go read. What am I reading? I think I'm reading something called Bad Blood. Um, yeah. It's a... 
vampire and witch romance. And I'm like super excited about it. So that's what I'm going to go do. But um, the next time you will see me live streaming, it will be Sunday morning. I will set those up tomorrow. I was 26 in 2006. What's a decade? You're fine. You're young. I, ha I have opinions on the COVID shot. So do I. Uh, I think it moderated my commenting kids are active younger nowadays. <sighs> yeah. Uh, but, like, that's only two years away from for Amelia. That's way too young. Way too young. Uh, like, I feel like... It has puberty started a lot earlier nowadays? Oh, it's terrifying. 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 God. No, no, I, I don't want, I don't want it. Seriously? I feel like I didn't get my period until eighth grade it's no longer like seventh and eighth grade is like the normal of getting your period ah oh. i'm sick of politics in general <laughs> um yeah but elementary school is not the age they should be active agreed I feel like middle school is too young. High school, I get. High school, I understand. Ugh. You were in fifth grade? Oh, my gosh. I was eighth grade when I got mine. Maybe seventh grade. But I was definitely in middle school. I had a friend who started at 10 years old. I was almost, I was 13, almost 14 when I got mine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was 13. So that would have been either end of seventh grade or beginning of eighth grade for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about puberty and when we first got our periods. <laughs> But I need to go. I need, I need to go lay down and read. So I am going to call it. She was. I saw your comment, Katrina. Maybe she just takes after you. So if I'm lucky, Amelia will take after me. I think my mom was like ninth grade, but she was also an athlete. And I know um, sometimes when you're an athlete, it gets, um, you can get it later in life. <clears throat> Alrighty. I am calling it. I will see you guys in the Discord and live streaming on Sunday. Thank you for streaming with me and getting all the words. I hope the next couple of days are good for you guys. If you want to do some um, writing sprints in the Discord, uh, we can do that. I will be writing probably tomorrow morning, uh, late morning. Um, so I'll be in the Discord for sure tomorrow. And um, until, until next time, happy writing, guys. Have a good night.